Okay. Hi, you guys. And feminism. Feminists and feminism. Of social justice warriors. The social justice warriors. The social justice warrior left. And the regressive left. At the regressive left. Against the regressive left. That's just virtue signaling. Virtue signal. Virtue signaling. The fashy feminists in the mass media. And feminism. Feminists and feminism. The Aussie feminazi hordes. Feminists. Feminism and feminism. Hang on a minute. I are you a classical liberal by any chance? Liberal is in the true sense of the world, as in the, the, the classically liberal. Yeah, it shows. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode 57 of The Descent of Man. Oh, sphere. The series where I take you through the ways in which the Manosphere and its utterly disgusting, reprehensible douchebag inhabitants are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today we're dealing with a posh Australian, because apparently such things exist. Who knew? Anyways, it's a woman who dresses like she's from the 1950s and has opinions and social attitudes like she's from the 1950s as well. Yes, it's Daisy Cousins! Now, Daisy is a journalist who occasionally writes for The Spectator Australia and is a regular contributor to Sky News Australia, which is very much like Fox News in America, which is precisely why I put the quotation marks around journalist as well. And as I mentioned in the little sort of funny intro thing there, um, uh, she dresses like she's from the 1950s, and that's deliberate, um, and she has uh, social and political opinions uh, like she's from the 1950s too. I mean, she really is boomerism personified, okay? Because boomerism isn't so much an age anymore, it's, it's basically a kind of... Um, attitude. It's a way of life. And she sums it up fucking perfectly. She's very much a boomer in a 30-year-old's body. On so many hot-button issues, she basically is the absolute boilerplate boomer attitude. She really is um, almost a kind of parody. It is instead due to the sheer degradation of society. We live in a time when sex, which used to be an act that was considered sacred, to be confined within the bounds of matrimony under the assumption of mutual respect, has been reduced to a carnal, animalistic ritual to be tossed around at drunken romps between people who barely know each other. Um, there was one from Shane McMaster I saw. He said, what do you think of the Republic of, the idea of the Republic of Australia? Um, I am a monarchist. It's this generation of, of people who think that everything in their lives needs to go on social media because they, they've, they've grown <laughs> Including up. Including that they're ripping they've been, off the IRS? <laughs> yeah, like even, even that, they're, they're, they're so obsessed with it. But I think ultimately Victoria is, is really, it's the socialist public, it's the socialist republic of Victoria. Perhaps in a society that is veering further and further away from traditional values, a little bit of traditionalism would do it the world of good. Ah, boomerism. Thy name is Daisy Cousins. Now, Daisy has a regular repertoire of topics and buzzwords that she likes to go on and on about ad fucking nauseam. She talks about feminism all the fucking time. She talks about virtue signalling. She talks about her love of Donald Trump, which makes, I think, now seven whole Australians who like the orange baby Fuhrer. And, of course, she talks about identity politics, or more precisely, her disdain for identity politics. And so... I was introduced to the insidious, toxic, delusional world of identity politics. It's because of the poison of identity politics. The correct response to identity politics is not more identity politics. Yes, Daisy is very adamant about her supposed hatred for identity politics, but there's just one thing at the back of my mind that's bugging me about that. Oh yeah, that's right, Daisy. You attended the International Conference on Men's Issues in 2017, about which I even made an episode in this series. And of course, this is you being given a big shout out. He's even signal boosting one of your fucking awful videos by misogynist butt nugget Mike Buchanan of the laughably named Justice for Men and Boys, open brackets, and the women who love them, close brackets, party. Oh, I think it's always worth reminding everybody got a massive 153 votes in the 2015 general election. <laughs> Wanker! Anyways, yeah, he gave you a big up there. And here is you getting another massive shout out, this time on A Voice for Men, the notorious digital swamp of the men's rights bowel movement. And that article contains the very interesting revelation that you in fact hosted a screening of the Red Pill movie, the farcically one-sided MRA propaganda flick. 
So let me get this right, Daisy. You are an avid anti-feminist who attended the ICMI in 2017, which is, by the way, an intrinsically identity politics event. It's about men's identity, rights, politics. Identity politics, okay? You have also been given a shout out by Mike 153 Votes Buchanan and from A Voice for Men. And you even went out of your way to host a screening of the MRA propaganda fluff piece, The Red Pill Movie. Daisy, I hate to tell you this, but um, you don't hate identity politics. You fucking love it. You are an MRA. Just fucking deal with it. Now, having revealed to you all that uh, Daisy is an MRA, whether she would ever want to admit that or not, but it's the fucking truth, Daisy, and I think you know it deep down. Anyways, um, having revealed that to you all, I think it's worth showing you at least one way in which her being an MRA has led her down some pretty shitty paths. Because now it's time for... <laughs> Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. And although this one isn't going to be as bad as some of the other instalments in this series, still, ugh, just... <sighs> now, Daisy has not said anything nearly as horrific as old 153 votes or the kind of shit you'll find on A Voice for Men, but she still said some pretty dumb crap, including this bullshit about Christine Blasey Ford. Now, I am not saying she's lying here, not by any stretch of the imagination. I do believe that she has been sexually assaulted. She is obviously very damaged. But you've got to remember, she is a lefty. She has spent a lifetime in the world of American academic liberals. So safe to say, she does not like Trump. We also know for sure that she did participate in a pro-science, anti-Trump march wearing a brain-shaped pussy hat. She is also a psychologist, which means she's an expert in human behavior and would know how to manipulate the committee with emotion. And it also means that she would know exactly how to pass a polygraph. Yeah, I'm totally not saying she's a lying bitch, but here are all the reasons why I think she's a lying bitch. Jesus fucking Christ, Daisy, you really are just unbelievable garbage. None of the information you presented there, assuming it's even fucking true, is remotely relevant to the matters of fact regarding the situation, regarding the actual case. Which I'm sure you're already very well aware of, but you're going to smear her nonetheless. Because you are nothing but partisan rape apologist garbage. Fuck you. Anyways, let's take a look at something slightly less depressing, shall we? I mean, it's still going to be shitty, but, you know, just slightly less so. Let's have a watch of one of Daisy's videos entitled Daisy's Five Point Plan for Thrashing Leftists. Oh, God, she so wants to be Ben Shapiro, which itself is the saddest indictment of her I can possibly think of. Anyways, let's take a look at this fucking bullshit, shall we? Now, the left has a very particular way of attacking. They're very aggressive and they're very noisy and they're very organised. So I think in our case, the best defense we have is a good offense. Really, Daisy, you think the right need to be on the offensive more? Because the following list of 21st century terrorist attacks and murders carried out by right-wing arseholes would suggest to me that the right have been on the attack quite a lot as it is. Yeah, that wasn't even a complete list for fuck's sake. If I put in all of the abortion clinic attacks, that list would have gone on a lot longer. So yeah, I think the right have been on the attack quite enough as it is, Daisy, you fucking right-wing shill hack. Jesus Christ, that wasn't even one of the five points on the fucking list, and I'm already sick of this bastard video. So what I have put together then um, is what I would like to call Daisy's five-point plan for thrashing leftists. So point number one is know your facts. This is extremely important and stating the bleeding obvious but still so important. Hang on a minute, did you just say know your facts? You, Daisy Cousins, are telling other people about the importance of knowing their facts. So it seems to me that what's in order is a quick fire round of me, you know, uh, correcting the bullshit you put out there. Either lies or just, you know, occasions upon which you were talking shit. Or occasions upon which you just didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. Yeah, I think that would probably be appropriate given the bullshit there. What do you reckon, Rodicats? I care not for your trivial human endeavors. 
All right, Rory Katz, I was just asking, Jesus Christ. You're not going to get any chicken with that kind of attitude, young man. Anyways, fucking cat. Right, uh, let's get on with this um, quickfire round of exposing Daisy's bullshit then, shall we? Well, there were absolutely hysterical claims made, not just about him, but by his supporters. And allegedly there was, you know, hardly any of them. And they were all terrible rednecks with no education who were violent racists. Next minute, he's won the election. He didn't win the popular vote, <laughs> but he won by a landslide in the Electoral College. Now, I've dealt with this one before in the series, but here we go again. No. No, he fucking did not win in a landslide, Daisy. Look at the numbers here, for fuck's sake. There are very few narrower victories than the one that Trump got. If he can be judged to have won in a landslide, then the word landslide no longer means anything. And that sounds dangerously like postmodernism to me. I mean, you wouldn't want to upset Papa Peterson and the lobster hordes, now would you, Daisy? We defy the laws of identity politics, which is a grievous sin in the eyes of leftists, and for that, we must be stopped. Now, I should clarify, I am not relaying this information to you to play the victim, because women on the right don't do that. So women on the right don't play the victim? Oh, fucking really. Sounds like we need a montage here, please. As a Jewish woman, I stand before you today wearing the Jewish star that the Nazis made the Jews wear during the Holocaust. What Jack Dorsey is doing with his egregious double standard by allowing for verified hateful liberals and leftists and jihadis to spew their hate and violence on social media while banning a Jewish conservative journalist like myself. And they had a bullhorn and they were very close to my face, screaming in my ear. It was reminiscent of, of the civil rights era. This is what you would expect at the civil rights era if a black woman was dining at a restaurant. I think it's a wonderful thing that we've been brought together today to question that and to challenge uh, what the UK is focusing and spending their money on because there are genuine problems with extremism There are genuine issues that need to be investigated by the police But a young Canadian girl coming in to visit her friends is not one of them But you know obviously they they define us as all sorts of things. I don't even bother fighting back against it anymore I mean they call Trump Hitler, so you just can't trust these people. But uh, regarding what happened to us, I, it, it seemed like some kind of coordinated effort because you saw they, they went after Lauren Southern right after my boyfriend and me. When your outlet is taken away from you and you don't understand why and you're so disappointed and you're so blindsided by it, it hurts. Yes, there's plenty of victim playing from ladies on the right, including yourself. So don't talk shit, a eh, days. Calling for violence means just that, calling for violence explicitly calling for people to harass or hit or kick or kill a person or group of people. Trump has never done that. Oh my god, just such a lying fucking shill. It's embarrassing. Donald Trump has called for violence on numerous occasions. Now to save the running time of this video, instead of playing them here, below in the description box you will find a link to a video I made a while ago which shows many examples of Trump calling for, condoning and supporting violence. So again, Daisy, the facts just aren't with you on this one. I would hate it, hate it, if the right started doing those same things. I would hate it. Um, I think it would undermine um, what conservatism is. It's It's... You know, cons conservatism is classy. Pussy grabbingly so. No, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the religion, and I hate the comparison to Christianity. They say, "Oh, but Christianity says this in the Bible." It's like, yeah, but the, there's no there's no process of abrog abrogation with the Bible. Um, you know, like you, and also the New Testament, that which which is all the peace, love, and understanding versus is afterwards. And you know, Christianity has the word Christ in it, and these are the things that Christ says. Um, you can't compare it to Christianity. There aren't crazy armies of Christians everywhere fighting, like cutting off people's heads, all in the name of Jesus. It's only Islam that's doing that. So Daisy, you reckon there aren't armies of Christians killing people? Really? You want to fucking go there? Okay then. Well, how about the Army of God, an American terrorist group who specialise in killings at abortion clinics and bombing gay bars? Or how about the Lord's Resistance Army, a Christian terrorist army which has killed fucktons of people as well as taking child soldiers all across Central Africa? Or how about the Eastern Lightning, a Chinese Christian terrorist cult whose acts of murder include the killing of a schoolchild and the beating to death of a woman in a McDonald's? Or how about the Phineas Priesthood, an American white supremacist Christian terrorist group who have committed 
bombings of abortion clinics and bank robberies? Or how about the National Liberation Front for Tripura, a Protestant terrorist sect in northern India, who have kidnapped, tortured and killed countless Hindus for refusing to convert to Christianity? Are those enough examples for you, Daisy? Because I could go on. Because you see, there are tons of armies of Christians killing people, Daisy Cousins, you lying prick. This marks the difference between feminists and, say, men's rights activists. MRAs are generally perfectly happy to have the discussion about women's rights. Are they indeed, Daisy? Well, you might want to tell your good buddy over at Voice for Men, Paul Elam, because he seems very much to feel otherwise. That until I wake up in a culture where this is not looked at and shrugged, where it's not looked at and laughed at, where it's not looked at and have people tell me that I hate women in order to express compassion for these problems, then I do not want to hear fuck all about how men need to be returned to their responsibilities to women. You see, Daisy, Paul Elam and that crowd of MRA dickwads clearly aren't in the mood to be discussing, you know, women's rights issues and stuff like that. So how about you stop fucking lying? And, of course, uh, take your own advice on point one here and actually, you know, learn some shit. Yeah? Maybe, you know, get some facts because it appears that um, you don't have many of them. Or at least you're pretending you don't. Because that's all part of the grift. Point number two, remove the moral high ground. Now, this is something that I have pulled semi straight out of the Ben Shapiro playbook. Um, and he calls it, rather than removing the moral high ground, he calls it removing the you're an asshole complex, basically. So according to Ben, and he's correct, the left's only argument is character assassination. It is at the very core of everything that they do. They genuinely believe that calling someone racist, sexist, bigot, ignorant, etc. is a legitimate argument technique. So it's just the left that do that, is it, Daisy? Well, of course it fucking isn't. And you already know that, so I don't know why you're lying about it. Uh, well, of course it's part of the grift again, isn't it? Yeah, silly me. I mean, I prefer to earn an honest living where, you know, I don't have a crippling sense of guilt at the fact that I lie to people for money. But you do you, I suppose. And for those who are interested in receipts, the following compilation is from right-wingers who are using insults and slurs in lieu of argumentation. So, um, enjoy, I guess. But Schiff looks like the archetype, archetypal cocksucker with those little deer-in-the-headlight eyes and all his stuff, and there's something about this fairy. Overnight, Trump retweeting this image. The text reads, no need to spill the beans. The images are worth a thousand words. The only men who seriously watch BuzzFeed are tofu-eating, male feminist virtue signaling, beta orbiter, soy boys. My position is very simple. There are just three genders. Um, there's man, <laughs> woman, and retarded. This young man is retarded. Up, Alex. These guys are pussies. Most feminists are out of shape, pierced, have freakish dyed short hair, wear gender queer clothing, take on mannish demeanors, and are typically unappealing to heterosexual men because they look like swamp donkeys. Yeah, Paul, because you're such a fucking catch, aren't you? I mean, yeah, Watson, you would be absolutely swimming in pussy if you ever left your mum's fucking basement, you creepy golem looking motherfucker. Anyways, the point being that, you know, the right do insults over argumentation all the time, Daisy, so shut the fuck up. Alright, point number three, don't interrupt. So I guess this is the part of the video where I show the clip of you and a fellow Aussie Fem RA interrupting the fuck out of Australian feminist journalist Clementine Ford. And it was on national TV as well, wasn't it? Quite clearly an absurd premise. Two of wrongs course don't make I do right, though. That's Can I please the thing. finish, Lauren? If you're going to be logical, finish? then you can. We'll go to you in a sec, Lauren. Can I, later? Can I, yeah, can I please yep. just finish?
with what Daisy was saying. You, and I didn't think she was very smart. Did, Daisy, how did you, did you take you it? Way to the realm you of ad hominem as well. After... But ad hominem is different to... <laughs> no, it's, to it's actual personal. Saying, it's not... Daisy. Not I never commented on your appearance. You didn't. I believe that of the two of us, it's only been you who's commented on your appearance. As a rebuttal, though. As, as a, a rebuttal. rebuttal as, a, as, a, as a retaliation. So, so me much... commenting you proudly set yourself out as someone who takes pride in trolling people on the internet. It but don't you as well? In, in, what, in what way did I troll people well, by writing a tribute article to Bill Lee? So, yeah, uh, take your own fucking advice, Daisy. Stop interrupting people. Yeah, and in terms of Daisy and Clementine Ford going at loggerheads there, um, that is a point we will be returning to, it, returning to, or even returning to, in just a second, because, yeah, things got a little bit spicy between them. Point number four, point out the personal attacks. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that leftists think that personal attacks are a legitimate form of argument. So how am I to take it, Daisy, that you think that personal attacks are illegitimate then? Because your very, very personal attacks against the aforementioned Clementine Ford would very much seem to suggest otherwise. My, my, Daisy Cousins, you have quite the acid tongue on you there, don't you? Yes, uh, Daisy fucking hates Clementine Ford. Clementine Ford. Australian feminist Clementine Ford. Clementine Ford. Take Australian feminist Clementine Ford. Clementine Ford. Clementine Ford. And it all dates back to uh, the first time that Daisy really got um, any kind of national attention in Australia when she appeared on the Q&A programme, which uh, for viewers in Britain is basically like question time, right? But for everyone else around the world, it's basically a nationally broadcast political panel discussion show. And Daisy Daisy appeared on it, and naturally no one had really heard of her, including Clementine Ford. And so uh, Clementine uh, gave what I think are a couple of really rather nice burns on Daisy uh, on Twitter, to which Daisy did not respond very well whatsoever. And they've been engaging in intermittent bouts of verbal jousting ever since. Now I'm not saying for a second that Clementine Ford did not hold her own and give Daisy plenty back in return during their exchanges, but as we saw in the montage I just played, it was Daisy that decided to make it personal by attacking Clementine Ford's appearance and stuff. Which is a really low move, Daisy. And frankly, the fact that you cocked quite a bit in return from Clementine's fan base cannot be of surprise to you, surely. But the overarching point here is again the hypocrisy, Daisy, in that you have absolutely no fucking leg to stand on when it comes to attacking others for using personal attacks over argumentation, because you've done that consistently now. Clementine Ford's the main target, it seems, but you have done it to other people as well, so really you should, you know, uh, look in the mirror before giving that advice to other people, I would suggest. Point number five. Don't let them make you angry. Don't let them make you angry. Really, Daisy? You're going to go with that, are you? So every single point on this list is a mishmash of projection and hypocrisy on your part. Fucking brilliant. Because, Daisy, do you think maybe some of the incredibly personal attacks you launched against Clementine Ford, do you think that maybe they were born out of anger? Just maybe a little bit, yeah? Maybe? Yeah, of course they fucking well were. Now, you can get fired up, you can get passionate about what you're talking about, but keep it high energy, as Donald Trump would say, rather than aggressive or hysterical. Because hysteria, let's face it, it is a left-wing thing, all right? Just leave that to the left. Leave them to get angry. We'll just remain grounded. So you started off this video with right-wing shill hackery, and you're finishing it in exactly the same way good times, because I think we all know of quite a few right-wingers who are prone to bouts of hysteria pretty fucking regularly. They want to shatter your mind talking about Justin Bieber! Oh, I'll fucking cook my burrito, bitch! Oh, Shit. <laughs> I am a patriot and you are a traitor. Shut the fuck down.
down there and you interview her. Give her the respect she needs. If you're not here to interview military, leave. 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 You're here about Hillary Clinton. We're here about Trump and our military. Leave. You have to wonder what kind of system is producing them. And I tell you what, Lacey, it is a fucking feminist system that's doing this. I live like a capitalist every single day, hey, Chank. I live as a capitalist. Hey, hey, okay? hey, hey, hey. I live when I play. Uh, hey. no, no. No. What do I do? I get charity every single year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Less than his. Charlie, take it. Come on, seat. Chank, let's go. Charlie. Let's go. Charlie. Say God damn them. God damn them. God damn them. God fucking damn them to hell! Yeah, so, um, hysteria really isn't like a solely left-wing thing, you fucking lying hack. Anyways, let's wrap this shit up, because I am so fucking done with Daisy Cousins at this point. Yeah. Now, Daisy is by no means the worst person to have ever gotten an episode in this series, but she's still garbage. I mean, garbage with a slightly more pleasant demeanour, which helps, I suppose, but that doesn't detract from the fact that she is still fucking garbage. And it certainly doesn't change the fact that she's a boilerplate, young boomer, tradcon dickhead, who is prone to bouts of slut-shaming, victim-blaming, rape apologetics. So yeah, like I said, still garbage. But anyways, with all of that said, done and out of the way, there is just one thing left for me to say. Daisy Cousins. Go fuck yourself. Now I've got a cousin called Kevin. He's sure to go to heaven. Always spotless, clean and neat. As smooth as you can get him. He's got a fur lined sheepskin jacket. My ma says it cost a packet. She won't even let me explain that. We're just at the same Oh my perfect cousin What I like to do he doesn't He's his family's pride and joy His mother's little golden boy He's got that grease in economics Mass physics and bionics He thinks that I'm a cabbage It's cause I hate university challenge even at the age of ten Smart boy Kevin was a smart boy then He always beat me It's a beauty, yo Cause he took a kick And I didn't know Oh my perfect cousin What I like to do, he doesn't He's his family's pride and joy His mother's little golden boy Synthesizer Got that human league into advisor Now he's making lots of noise Played along with the high school boys Girls try to attract his attention But what a shame, it's in vain Sort of rejection He will never be left on the shelf Cause Kevin, he's in love with himself Oh my perfect cousin What I like to do, he doesn't his family's pride and joy, his mother's there.